Hey guys, I have your name 248 here, and this is going to be take two at recording Let's Optimize Jigsy. I'm just going to start by jumping right in to playing back my solution of uh, 772. So this is something a little different for Let's Optimize. The big difference here is this is a level I've already worked on. It's an official level, and some of the stuff done was in a collaboration. However, the reason I'm doing this, and I really want to have this uh, video out there, is because, one, it's a very open level with a lot of things you can do. For example, leaving those chips there. Uh, it's just one of those little things. There's cycles to manage, there's big picture stuff to realize, and I think that having out there just how I approach a bit, an open structured level like this is valuable. Um, in addition to that, uh, the 772, it, there's a 772 in the public TWS, courtesy of JB. I still don't believe that it should be public, but since it is, I'm going to make the best of it and just show off this. So you're going to notice that this block pushing here is pretty simple, uh, actually. A lot of this route is simple in hindsight. I think the teeth thing is probably one of the biggest details. Um, that two move weight is just so I measure it out. <laughs> Technically, if you wait one move and go full speed there, uh, you just get it. But I like doing it that way. And this green lock recessed wall section is the most interesting part of the level by far. Um, and this route here is actually two moves on it away from making another cycle uh, at the, on the balls at the end. Unfortunately... I tried pretty much everything, and I, the best I was able to come up with was a route that was one single second, or sorry, um, one single chip off. If the chip under the block was not there, uh, we would have actually found it. And this is the result of this, a personal evolution history on the level, where I have some routes in Super CC, which I'll be showing off after this. Um, I'm going to be starting by looking at my initial draft of a route, and I'll be talking about just how I start approaching a level like this. Uh, and that initial draft was a 756. Point out the big thing that I overlooked and how to correct it, and just generally how I go and improve. So we're going to go open a solution file. I'm going to pick Jigsy 756.4. And so this is going to be vastly different from what we just watched. But you'll notice, uh, from the structure of the level and the way it's laid out, the big thing you want to do with a big open level like this is identify the things that have to be done before other things. In the case of Jigsy, it's actually pretty nice in that you have to get the red key from down here to get the fire boots to get to these blocks so you can get the tank button, so you can get the traps held down, so you can get the blue key, so you can get the green key, so you can get these blocks to get the clone button and toggles, to get the yellow key, to get the last chip. So it's a linear structure. Um, this teeth handling method is seven moves slower than what was in the 772. Uh, the teeth handling was also the final improvement. Um, the big thing was originally I was trying to do all of the block pushing at once down here. This very clearly is not going to be the fastest method, but it seemed like a reasonable enough idea at the time, a reasonable enough starting point. I mean, four blocks, four needs, I mean, why use these ones? You can just not even go over there with the green key. Um, you'll also notice that this route has really awkward handling of these teleports. Because my initial draft was, okay, I can use the chips down by the teleport as equalizers and just take this path around to get to the blue key, completely missing this path here being much faster. Um, when I looked back over my route after I had my route, and I was, you know, 13 seconds off of the bold at the time of 769, uh, I pretty quickly realized that I don't have to take two runs along this bottom. This block pushing up here is very inefficient. Um, a lot of my improvements after realizing this bottom thing just stemmed from handling this stuff up here better. I think everything until 766 was that. So I'm going to skip straight to my uh, 765 or 766 route here after this ends. Um, one big execution thing, you have to half wait on that fourth floor. 
and if you do it perfectly, you don't lose anything, but you'll notice that that wall there, you have a lot of waiting at the end here, and I didn't know a way to avoid it, and I still don't know a way to avoid it, other than just having a better route. So we're going to go open another solution file here. So I have this 762, which if we rewind a bunch, you'll notice does do this bottom thing and still collects all the chips from this section, which you'll remember my, the 772 I showed did not do that. And generally the structure is going to be much the same with the block pushing on the right here. Generally the same. Because, well, the big thing about this route here is I realized, oh, I don't need to go along the bottom twice. So I went and I rerouted based around that. Um, the follow-up realization was that, well, what I don't actually remember, even though I recorded this once where my commentary got dropped not too long ago. So we're going to look at the 766, and we're going to rewind all the way, and we're going to play it out from the start. This is the big jump, um, the big realization. The 762 was pretty solid, but the green lock and recessed wall section was pretty inoptimal. Um, and as a result of that, there was a good amount of free time to save to just gain moves. So these bugs, you kind of just, that's kind of the only cycle that works. Somewhere along the line, I realized I could leave behind those two chips and pick them up at multiple different points at a four move cost instead of a two move cost. But that two move cost, if of picking them up immediately, would end up requiring a lot of extra waiting. So it ends up being equivalent either way and just lets you affect cycles for later. So big thing to realize is that sometimes it's better to wait just because uh, it makes the cycles better. As James said when he released Amphibia 850, Behold the glory of the nine weight. So one thing I'm still doing wrong is going back to the left after the green key. This was something I had re I had realized you could do and just skip over after the green key and go to the right and approach from the top. But I was fixated on the chips up by the uh, top left. And just, it was obviously going to be more efficient to do something like this and collect them all on the way over. But no, you can actually just get them all when dealing with the blocks, because you have to go over there for the toggle button anyway. And so that makes it better to go over from uh, these chips and duck over like so. So I, somewhere along the line, I did realize that these blocks could be handled a lot smarter. And I'm pretty sure that was my big improvement to get to... Uh, 766 in addition to the block handling. So again, those two chips are left behind. And this 766 I'm showing was the last route that I found entirely on my own. Every route after this was the result of some sort of collaboration. So at this point, Shane Klumenhaga, also known as Hornlets, also had a uh, 766 route. And I believe I still have his lying around in my folder here. Um, yes. Oh, wait, no, that's his 771. Um, spoilers, I guess. Um, I guess I don't have that route. Oh, well. Um, regardless, you know, the big thing his structure had was it did take this path after the green key. And we're just going to skip to about here. Because the beginning is going to be much the same. Like, those chips have been already handled optimally. There's not really anything to explain about the top. Um, the really big thing about this particular Jigsy route is that... Um, it's still doing the slow method of this teeth. But Shane's uh, 767 that he found and sent over went left here and didn't push this block. And I noticed when I was watching it back that you could get free pushes out of that block and save something like eight moves on the spot and more if the cycles cooperated, which they did. And so that we immediately like jumped to 770, which at the time was a bold plus one. 
which, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, I believe the handling of this section is still inoptimal. There, there's some small inaccuracies here and there with this route still, but in general, we knew now, because we were at the level of bold, that we had the right general ideas throughout the level at this point. It was mostly just a question of, okay, do we have the best possible time? This block pushing from this fire is clearly ideal. We've got a good start. So the big question, I guess, is what do we do with the uh, chip equalizers here before the teeth? Is there a better way to handle the teeth, which we were unable to find at the time? And just that was pretty much it. Oh yeah, and this structure with the green locks and the recessed walls. There's always a question of what else can we improve? And so what I'm going to do here now after we show this ending is as we're trying to find more improvements, you'll notice this is a 770.2. So if we rewind about 30 seconds, if we could save two moves on the green lock recessed wall section in here, um, emulated by leaving behind that one chip, when we come up around here, you'll notice that saving that one move requires a four move weight here but as we zip along it would get a 771 or sorry 771.8 here three moves later would be in the exit 771.2 so the question would then become how do we get those two moves and so there was some looking and i ended up finding this breakthrough um, before too much longer. Shane also found a 771 before too long as well. You'll notice that two chips were taken up here and the chips down here have already been picked up. They were left behind at first, but the combination of taking these two chips plus taking these ones now uh, avoided waiting for the balls. So same general idea here. This was, this was the uh, extent of the variation testing. You go, you try something a little different, that will end up saving moves later, and ultimately, this wasn't the result of saving two moves on the green lock and recessed wall section. The path here is the same. This was spending two moves earlier in the level to get a different cycle, and I believe cost six moves to save eight, and it ends up saving that two to save five. I don't know, it's not always the easiest to... Um, understand the cycles and forecasting, but it's not too hard to, to think, okay, well, this should be at the very least comparable, and if it's not, then something weird is going on. Um, also, trying to look back and understand what exactly is going on is not the easiest thing to do, um, but as you're working on the level, you kind of do understand. So again, I'm going to go open up the uh, 772, um, I'll actually start by opening the original one that got sent, uh, which you'll notice has this structure at the top. If we go and we open another solution, which is the one that I just showed you, um, if we come over here, extra, extra two moves, the block section here is different. So, what is different about these two 772s? Well, the big thing that's different, uh, the start's the same, um, is mostly with this equalizer here, this equalizer here, a better block method here, and overall my arrangement in this 772 that you've already seen uh, has a lot more value to it, or a little more value to it, I should say, just because if we come up here and do that thing where we emulate saving two moves again, So if we could save two moves on this, which we, all three of us, um, Bighorn, Shane, and I, all spent, wait, sorry, all spent a, at least an hour just looking at the green lock and recessed wall section. Um, so funny thing about the 771, um, after I had found the 771 with Shane, not even five, like less than five minutes later, the corn reveals a 771 and says, don't hate me for this. Because, you know, he, he assumed we were still struggling and hadn't found, I was still struggling and hadn't found anything. 
But no, we had it. We, nobody had scored it yet. So we reported this, we collaborated, we tried to find 772, and we had no such luck. And then the next morning, before work, I checked Discord, there's nothing there. During my first break, uh, I'd recently gotten a new phone, so I could check mobile Discord. And all of a sudden, there's a message there. With 770, I just saved seven on the uh, teeth section. I'm like, seven moves? How do you save seven on the teeth? Which, well, you save seven on the teeth by bringing it up and over, as opposed to what I was doing originally. Uh, so the reason it saves seven, which I can actually analyze this here right now, is I was doing this, which is a four move detour, which picks up this chip and a six move wait, and you run back down and through. If we analyze what uh, the 772 does, there's a two move detour and a one move wait. Obviously that's going to be seven moves faster. Um, other big stuff about this level that's worth covering is just the structure is pretty clear. The teeth, to me, obviously you were gonna use it on the bomb to only take one trip to this northeast corner as opposed to needing to bring one of these blocks over. Uh, JB769 did do that, and that's a very impressive route that manages to get 769 with the um, without using the teeth there. Um, other big stuff, just where you go after this green key was something I had overlooked for a bit. Level was very interesting to work on. Very difficult, but very interesting. Um, what else is worth talking about? Oh yeah, I have a route for these green locks here. I don't, I'd have to rediscover it and I'm not gonna do that right now. That if the chip was not under the center block, then, or I should say, if you didn't have to push the center block, then you would save those two moves and get the 773. Um, Shane's version of a 772, if a glider was one move different, then it would be 773. So the level is tantalizingly close to that extra second breakthrough, but it just doesn't seem to be there. Um, yeah, I, th I think 772 is one of those routes that is surprisingly manageable to find. It's mostly about finding the right ideas. Uh, with a big open level like this, you can miss so many little things or just not see a potential structure or just tunnel in on one thing. And that doesn't mean it's unreasonable to find. It just means that it's something that's easily missed. And a lot of stuff can be easily missed. Like on the very next level, this is a bit of a tangent. I covered it in the previous recording attempt. I'm going to do it again now. So the, the way you do the first room of life is not a puzzle is like this. Like super obvious right here, right? There's no way anybody could ever screw that up and get to this recessed wall any later than 833.2. You have to get all the chips in the room. What if I told you my initial attempt at this route that, you know, my 663, I actually reported, did it like this. Exactly like this. And got their six moves slower by going up and taking the chip early. Doesn't matter how good you are. It's very easy to miss things. So as always, uh, with these Let's Optimize videos, uh, I hope this was interesting. A little insight into my thought process. I would gladly do another level like this that's a custom level. Um, and try and just tackle that, see how interesting it is to do. I hope this uh, little experiment in format of going over some past routes and the evolution and some of the thoughts was interesting. Um, I don't think I'll be doing something like this again though. Uh, Jigsy is kind of in a very unique position where one, I have six or seven routes lying around that I can go through and be like, and this is what I improved from going from this time to this time. This is what I was thinking to find it because this happened recently as well. And the route is public and a bunch of people have looked over it and we're pretty sure that it's optimal. Um, so it's a very unique case for a level and I'm, kind of happy I can do this. I still wish it wasn't public. It, it's a really good route to have to find. It's, it seems so much crazier than it actually is, which is true for a lot of levels in CCLP4. Anyway, I've rambled long enough here. Um, 
So what about future plans for uploads? Let's optimize ZK5, probably dead, uh, even with Super CC. I'm, I want to work on my official scores, uh, clean those up a little bit. Got some designing projects to do. Uh, I've got, want to play Josh's Walls of CCLP3, which I'm going to hopefully go into a recording session for that very soon here. Uh, the plan for that is to upload on Mondays and Fridays with Wednesdays as well, if I have a big enough backlog of videos to manage to keep that schedule. Um, with Josh CCLP4, I had a lot more free time and I struggled to keep a daily pace. So I'm just gonna go for bi-weekly and I should be able to keep that because I'd rather not have an irregular pace on this just based on the past. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, if you have any recommendations for levels that you think would be interesting to see me tackle or you want to see how I approach, feel free to shoot a request. I will make no promises on doing it, but if the level seems interesting, I probably will. Um, one level I have in mind, I do have a short list, that, but I've recently added a level to it, is I want to take another look at Never Stop Gaming's Feeble Existence. That level's never getting into a CCLP, being a uh, key color ripoff. And I am at B minus one right now with my current route. I looked over it a couple days ago. I'm one move off and I have no clue where it might be. So it could be interesting to try to find. But all right, I've rambled long enough. Until next time, later, hope you enjoyed. And if anybody caught the no audio version of this, I am sorry. <laughs>